Peter talking about the, uh, the corona and uh, we, we, we had it uh, with some kind of control until 2002 and in 2004 we privatized two of the banks and then everyone went up and Icelanders thought they were the richest people in the world. Okay? <laughs> People were lied to, the, the, the banks were robbed from the inside. We didn't know when everything crashed and nobody really knew what was going on. And we didn't get a clear pitch, picture until we had the, the special report in 2010. Uh, then we, we could see the whole picture. And what was then uh, obvious was that the banks had been robbed from the inside by their owners and their friends. And uh, uh, the government or people in power there, they, they kind of knew about it, but they were like paralyzed, they didn't do anything and they lied to the public. They said, they, they treated us like children, that we should just, you know, don't, don't worry about it, everything is under control and this is just minor something and uh, it wasn't. And so we, I think people really felt betrayed and angry, uh, especially for me the lying of the authorities it's you know because the authorities should work for people not for <laughs> companies so it was uh, hard for everyone and we are still every day in the news we have uh, now because now they're prosecuting the the banksters and it was, has taken so much time so we will have years and years and we are just trapped in this nightmare <laughs> trying to resolve this In 2008, we a lot of uh, groups uh, started to meet. We had the outdoor meetings, and indoor meeting, academic meeting, all kinds of meetings and blogs and discussions and trying to analyze everything. Uh, and then uh, in 2009, in January, we had this small revolution that was not really a revolution, but the government went away. And we had a minority government and, and election just in a few weeks and then some of the groups uh, decided to establish a political party and run and I was part of that and uh, was one of the leaders there and uh, so and we got a few people into parliament but it's not enough time just few weeks to establish a whole political party so it, the whole thing exploded in the summer but the parliamentarians they, they continued their work until the last election. Some are still in Parliament. Really? During the last four years with the, the left government, uh, people were very frustrated because everything, of course, the what had to be done, it was so much and uh, they, it was impossible to do it in four years and we should know that. But people really felt that the focus was not on the people and the homes, it was on the banks and the bank system and, and stuff like that. And so people were very frustrated. So it wasn't really uh, a surprise that they, they voted for the other blocks in politics. So, so from the left to the right again. But the right party was of course promising uh, very different things. They, something that are really socialistic like that release. So. Uh, they kind of, so we was, you know, we should have, you know, known that they would go in that direction. But now people are very frustrated with them because uh, they are not really keeping their promises as they said and they're showing their real face. And also they're kind of clumsy because uh, like with the, the Progressive Party, they are not very experienced and they, they have a lot of parliamentarians that are not very bright. <laughs> to just say it plainly and uh, they were not they, these are people that were not really uh, thought they would be parliamentarians but they did so well in the election so a lot of people are just like, like oh, what am I doing here <laughs> but, but uh, I don't know how it will uh, turn out because people don't really believe that the political system works and they don't really like any of the parties there is a lot of cry for new parties. Now they're establishing for the first time uh, a party that defines itself as a right party because the, all the other new parties have been uh, central parties or neither left or right or, or left. So now we are having a fraction on the right side. So I don't, 
I can't really predict how it will work, but I, the only thing that I know, like ne next time that we will uh, vote, it will be a different situation. But I don't know how. <laughs> I was saying that uh, traditionally fishing has been the main industry, but uh, before the crash, uh, it uh, was the banking sector that was the, the biggest industry in Iceland, and, and then of course that completely failed. So fishing be became important again, and then since then, because everything now is much cheaper than it was, tourism is a very interest, very big industry now, and very important. Uh, and then I talked a little bit about the aluminium uh, processing here, and it's very controversial. Uh, we have three big plants, but and they say like it's so good for everyone to get jobs, but uh, jobs related to aluminium industry is just one percent of the jobs in Iceland, so it's not really that big. But still, it's it's a uh, when you look at the economy of the country, it's a, it's a big factor and. Uh, also, because the price of the aluminium, it uh, can rock, it goes up and down, it, and we can see that it has an effect on our economy. So it is kind of too big, and, and the people of Iceland, because we are selling uh, electricity to these plants very cheaply, so the people of Iceland or the government is not getting very much from it, and they, the, the companies they manage to not to pay so much tax here because of some tricks in their books. So we are not really getting very much out of it, but at least we could, I think, do a lot better. And it's also very bad because it has been used to uh, kind of make a contrast between like the this area and uh, the countryside. So. Uh, People here in Reykjavik and the surrounding towns, they are generally against more plants, but people in small villages, they want a plant, so, it, so it, there's this constant conflict, which is not very good and not very healthy. Well, uh, if you look historically, uh, like uh, participation in election has always been quite high in Iceland. But now people are maybe not really believing so much in that system and we have had a lot of uh, projects that were, are seen to give people more uh, power. Like in Reykjavik we have something we call Betri Reykjavik, that uh, you can vote on things uh, within the system of Reykjavik. But the questions they have there for people to vote on, they are not really real questions. It's, it's nothing that matters. It's, like one of the questions last time was how to paint something. It, it doesn't matter if it's like bright colors or pastels. It doesn't, really, it doesn't matter. And this is not what democracy should be about. It should be about the, the real uh, changes. So the uh, political elite has not really opened the door for people to, to go in and really vote. And of course we have exceptions with the ISAF referendums, two of them, and then uh, the whole process of the constitutional affair. But uh, they, it's so obvious that they, do, they don't really want people to have influence on what really matters. But uh, also when you have such a small society, it's so easy for people, just regular people, to have a, a blog or to write something really good or, or speak out, because you have so few voices that you can easily be hurt and uh, so a lot of people are of course is experimenting with that and you can have even though you're not in politics you can have really big influence just with because it's easy to get hurt in such a small society but i think uh, the reason that uh, icelanders are not really speaking that much out is because we were a colony for such a long time and uh, at that time, the power was always in Denmark, and uh, Icelanders just did their usual thing, and they said, well, there's nothing, okay, somebody decides, and the king or something, and we, there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing. And there's this way of thinking, it's still kind of imprinted in a lot of people, but uh, the best thing about the whole crash and everything we have, have to deal with is, this is changing. and. And nobody came to rescue us, and <laughs> so we had we have to figure this out ourselves. 
and uh, so and to, to to be able to do that more people have to of course get involved and and i think a lot of people are uh, seeing that even though that they don't really find a platform or think the political parties are a good platform it's still it's kind of yeah we're growing <laughs> we're growing up <laughs> Hello! <laughs>